Hi ladies, it's Tammy, Tatsy2 here, and I've had a few requests on how I made the boxes and stuff for this upcycled orange box. So I thought I'd do a really, really quick tutorial, or at least I hope it's quick, on how I made this. It's very, very simple. I put it together in a night. So here we go. First thing I did was I took one of the orange boxes, you know, just the normal orange boxes that everybody gets with their mandarins okay and I didn't I took the lid apart because this lid is almost exactly the right size for all your shelving and stuff that's inside the box so use it it's very easy why go cutting more stuff apart and on the inside of the box there are the tiny flaps that are always sitting in here and I trimmed those out with my exact with my uh, utility knife don't cut too deep or you'll cut through the box okay Next thing I did was I just measured out my box to see, you know, I needed dimensions, okay? So that was my next step. Took my ruler, measured out my box, okay? Figured it out. It was 10 and 3 quarter inches, okay? So I divided that by 3, which came out to 3 and 5 eighths inch. So I took, I don't know if you can see it, and I'm sorry if you can't. I'm going to zoom in here a little. Let's see if that helps. Okay. I took and I measured three and five eighths inches twice. These are going to be my upright supports. And then I took the width or the height of my box. Yeah, that's the width. So that's the height of my box. And I've divided that in half as well. And this one was uh, seven and eighth inch. So for me, I had to kind of piddle around with it and I came out with it's right between it's a little line right between the three and a half and the three and five eighths inch on your ruler okay and I marked that in and I mark up the edge of the box too because once this is covered in paper you're not going to see anything so there's no sense putting your lines in here um, if you don't want to cover it by all means draw your lines all the way through you can, that way you can set your shelf in properly no problem I found it because I covered it, it just didn't work that way. Now make sure that all these little tabs that are in the bottom here are pushed in thoroughly. And if you want to get all fancy and really make it stick, you can put some hot glue in there if you need to. I didn't feel I needed to because once the paper is on, it holds this box really, really well. So it's not going anywhere. Okay, But just make sure your little tabs are pushed through. You don't want them all coming apart, you know, later on when you're trying to work on it. Okay. Now, you will find, though, that the box does have a tendency to shift in and out. And you do have to hold it or put a piece of tape on the corners to hold them firmly while you're building your box. Okay. Otherwise, they, they tend to shift a bit until your box is completely covered. Okay. Then what I did was I took the lid and took a few pieces of it. And I cut out a long shelf for the center. Okay, now my long shelf for the center is the 10 and 3 quarter inches. Okay, and that will slide in like this. Now it's going to be a nice snug fit. It's not going to be an overfit where you're going to get all these bends in the board. Okay, you want it to be a snug fit without all that. So you might have to retrim this shelf several times to get it to fit properly after you've gotten your box completely covered okay um, it fits like I cut it out right now just for an example it fits perfectly just like this it'll stay there that's what I wanted okay then I cut two of the uprights as well so that they can go in okay you need two uprights and I did this I didn't want to do a whole bunch of little things that I had to glue together and stuff, so I did them in two long ones like this, okay? And on these, what I did was I have measured out, let's see, okay, I measured out where my shelves would be at the 3 and 5 eighths inch marks, and then I marked my center line, okay? And then on the uprights, I marked my center line again, and that is really, really crooked. 
So let's try that one again. I have this Van Dancy ruler here, and it really works great because it has all the markings on it. I used to do a lot of quilting. Um, if you have one of these, fantastic. If you don't, and you can afford to invest in one, you should. And if not, just measure. Okay, so three, I've got one and seven eighths inches is my middle point. Okay, there. So we're gonna ignore that line. And it doesn't matter what you do on here, you're gonna cover this with paper. Okay, so now what I did was I took the insides and I went from this just barely to the side of my line and I right from the very center I trimmed it down and yes you're gonna have to do this several times to get it right that's just part of it and then I went on the other side of that line and I did it again so I'm taking out a small piece that's approximately the thickness of this cardboard okay And I'm going to have changed scissors. I broke those ones. So I'm going to use my big fan dancy ones. They're pains, but that's okay. Okay, so we're going to trim that out. And try and make it square. And yes, you have to fiddle fart with it. And if you don't make it right, there's lots of cardboard there. Okay. And the, like I said, the lid, it's the perfect size. The sides on it of the lid box are the perfect almost the perfect depth for inside your box. Like, I only had to trim, like, maybe an eighth of an inch off to get them to fit properly. And as you can see, I made a mess on this one, but I am doing this just for demo purposes. You don't want this. You want it straight. Okay, and then you're going to take this piece, and you're going to slide it in and see if it fits. Okay? And you want it to hold snug, but you also don't want to have bent over edges. So if you have a bent over edge here, then what you want to do is give it a little bit more trim. Okay? Very easy. And then for the long one, you're going to do the same, except you're going to do it twice. Each place that the uprights are going to fit into. Okay? So from the center line, see if I can do this. You're going to come down there. And I guess I could do this with my scissors, but you now this is by by my hand, so or in my hand. Watch your fingers. I have cut myself so many times with this thing. Okay. Okay. And then yes, I'm gonna use my bees. They cut everything. I love them. And they're so nice and sharp and pointy. Okay. So cut those out. Should have put my glasses on, ladies. I am very sorry. Okay, and I just pull these back and pull them out. Because you really don't have much um, of a width here in the cut. Sorry, a width here in the cut. So it just pulls out. See? All pulled out. Nice and neat. Now, when you put it together, okay, I always put the long edge, long clean edge here to the front of my box, okay, because these little things have a tendency to bend if you're not careful, okay, and if they're at the front, you can't give them any support. If they're at the back, I'm going to show you how to support them. The uprights here don't have that problem. So, what I always do is, and the reason for the center mark is so that you can go like this. And you're just going to slide them together. See? And they're going to fit perfectly like this. Okay? And since the uprights don't need the support, they're not holding any weight, really, them being, their little ends being to the front is not a problem at all. Okay, and once you get your paper on here and stuff, you really can't tell that they've been slid together like that. So you do that for both pieces, okay? 
Then when I go to put this into my box, let's say we're going to pretend my box is completely covered. Now when I go to put this into my box, I put this down the center, and this is where these center marks come in really handy because I don't finish these edges until it's all said and done. Okay? They're my last little step. So I line it up on my lines. And as you can see, I'm getting a bit of a, a warp. So I'm going to take a little bit off one edge here. Because it seems to be warping on me and I don't want it to warp. Sorry, I'm off camera. So I'm going to take just a smidge, a little hair off here. Okay. Now I'm going to slide that puppy in. There we go. Okay. Now what I'm going to do is I'm going to take just a couple of little pieces of the cardboard. Okay. Nothing fancy. No measuring. Okay. I just want a couple of really small pieces here. I don't know. I think I've got these about a quarter of an inch wide. You can make them bigger if you want. You don't have to. Okay. What I'm going to do is I am going to make these fit right on here. Okay, I'm going to turn them white side up so you can see. Okay, and I'm going to fit them right to this piece. You don't have to fit them right to it. That's the fun thing. You can, in fact, I'm not going to fit them to it. I'm going to make them smaller. Okay, so just a little quick cut. All done. Okay, you're going to need three of these. Three of these little pieces. Okay, and you're going to slide your piece in the center. Okay. Take your center line. You're going to move it down and move it along here too. And what I use for that is um, I try and use like the lightest pencil I can so that it can be hidden for this center line to go through. I take this little itty bitty piece and I hot glue it right underneath the bottom of the shelf. It's not going anywhere. It now has something to grab onto at the back. It's going to hold. These, whoops, sorry. These inside pieces here are going to hold the front. Here. No problem. So, now you'll have something that looks like this. Slide it together. Slide it in. And, of course, you're going to have a second upright here. Okay, you're going to have that little piece glued in here, you're going to have another one glued in on here, whoops, sorry, here, and another one glued in right there. All done. These I either paint or I hide them in the paper with paper, whatever. Okay, you don't need them to be big, they just need to be glued in. And you can use hot glue, wet glue. Uh, score tape, anything you want to put them in with, okay? Simple, easy peasy, okay? And that's the box. Now for the inside little tray boxes, I'm just going to clean up here. Now for these little boxes, okay, very easy as well. Um, everybody knows how to draw a square, am I right? Okay, sorry ladies, I'm trying to make this as fast as I can. Okay, I know the size that I want for my box, but first I'm going to make up a template. And these templates I keep for a long, long time. Okay, I have my template right here, but I'm going to show you how to do it. Okay, take the depth of your box that you want and the width. So you need the depth and the width, okay? Now, I want my box to have two and a half inch sides. Sorry. I'll go two and a half inch instead. Sides, okay. I want the bottom of my box to be two and a half inches wide by three inches long. Sorry, that's my phone. Okay. I'm going to bring myself back in here a bit, okay. And I'm really hoping that you can see this. And I'm sorry if you can't. I'll try, I will post these measurements and stuff on my blog as well, okay? So, for a box, 
a, a box that is completely whole in one piece. You need your sides, you need your bottom, you need another side, you need a side, and you need a side. Okay? Now I know I want the, the inside bottom of my box to be two and a half inches this way and three inches that way. Okay? Simple. These are going to be two and a half inches tall. Okay? And all your sides do need to be the same height unless you're making one of those really sweet little funky boxes that I love. Okay? Now, all you do is add them up. So two and a half and two and a half is five, plus that two and a half would equal seven and a half inches wide. Okay? And then two and a half and two and a half is five, plus two and a half is, sorry, no, plus three, I'm sorry, plus three. Two and a half and two and a half is five, plus three, and that's eight inches in um, depth, I guess, wide height. I'm going height because I don't know how else to write it, okay? So, first thing I do is cut out a piece of good, strong cardstock. This is, uh, I believe, 180 weight. It's really good, really strong, okay? And I cut it to size, so I've cut it at seven and a half by the miracle of camera, seven and a half by eight. Now, I kind of cheat off on my, um, doing my, okay, I'm sorry, I'm looking for my thing, my score. I like to mark out my center line, okay? So, seven and a half divided by two is three and three quarter inches. So, three and three quarter is that center. And then, after I scored it, I take my pencil and run it down. It makes it easier to find your center. Okay, eight inches, we all know is four. And I just tore my paper. Okay, found my center. So, here we're going to just start measuring out. And I'm going to use my zero center rule because it just makes life easy. So, the first thing I'm going to do is measure out... I want my inside width to be two and a half, so I'm going to go one and a quarter on each side here. And I'm going to go one and a quarter on each side here. If you're wondering what I'm doing, I'm sorry, I'm out of camera. Okay, one and a quarter, one and a quarter. If you're wondering what I'm doing, I am actually zero centering this ruler so that I can do this. Okay, those are my first set of lines. Down. And... I always feel like I'm crooked. I know I'm not, but it just feels it. Okay, now my next set of lines, I'm going to turn my page the other way, and I'm going to go, I need it three inches. So, put that on zero. I'm going to go one and a half inches on each side of the zero. And you can do this just with any ruler, right? Like, you don't need to have a zero center ruler. Okay? I'm very fortunate and do have one. Okay, so one and a half on each side. Now that is going to make my center of my box two and a half inches by three inches. Okay, so it is now from this edge here to this edge here, it's now two and a half inches. And if I turn it this way from this edge here to this edge over here, I am now three inches. Okay, and that leaves these. This is a side one. It is three inches by two and a half inches because that's what we allowed on this piece of paper. Okay? We now know that everything is centered. It's all ready to go. So now here's what I do. I know that that is the bottom part of my, the bottom of my box. So at the top of my box, I zero center it again, and I add a quarter of an inch to each line there. Okay, there's a quarter inch there and a quarter inch there. Then I take my ruler and I go from that mark back to this corner. Okay, that is going to be my cutting line. And then I do the same on the other side here, from this mark here to this corner here. Okay, and I'm going to do that for all four sides here. I'm going to add that quarter of an inch to each one and draw my line in. OK, 
Okay, there. And you want to try and be as close as you can, but I mean, it's not going to really matter. Um, once you get your paper on, you're not going to see if you've made a drastic error. Okay, and there's a reason that I'm not adding any flaps or anything, and I'll show you why. Okay, doing this quickly, quickly here. No, I'm trying to do it quickly, quickly. And I should have pre-done this, I'm sorry. Okay, and there's another, there's my line, another quarter inch, another quarter inch. Okay, bring it back down to the center marks here. Okay. Okay, now we're going to do a quick cutout with it. Okay. So the sides are going to be cut on that second line there, right down to that little corner. Okay. Once this is done, I'm going to show you a really fast way to cover these little boxes. You don't even have to use a ruler. Just a pair of scissors and some glue. I do recommend, though, that you use a scoreboard because it seems to really help with uh, making your your corners a little bit, or right, edges a little crisper. I mean, you don't have to. No law says you do. If you do, great. I know a lot of people use their cutter to do this, to do scoring. That works, too. I did that for a long time. Okay, so I've got four little diamond shapes that I've cut out, and... They go in my scrap bucket because I will use them somewhere. Now, what I did with my scoreboard, and people think is kind of funny, is I've drawn this line in pencil down it. There's a reason for that. Okay, I want to score my box, but I only want to score it for the center lines. Okay, so the easy way for me is to draw a line down my scoreboard, and then I can line up this little corner here and this little corner here on my pencil mark. It works great. I can just see it in there. Now I can score just those lines that I want. Sometimes it's hard to find those lines, you know, when you're on the scoreboard and you end up with the line somewhere. and Because the box, these edges aren't square, it kind of throws you off. Okay? So that's why I do that line. And I mean, it's just pencil. It comes off, no problem. It doesn't wreck your scoreboard. Okay. And since I use it all the time for making projects, I just leave it on my scoreboard. It doesn't come off until I take it off. So, And for some reason, I don't know why I always end up using the 4-inch mark. Okay. So now... I'm not going to worry about all the, my first score lines because those are for my center, right? I want just these four. Okay. Okay. And now you can crisp these up if you really want. They look good. But now I'm going to show you the trick on how to put this little puppy together without making a bunch of flaps you got to glue together and stuff, okay? I know, it's all loose. You're going, okay, now how's that going to stay together, right? <laughs> I'm going to show you the trick. First thing I'm going to need is a piece of the paper. So I'm going to grab a piece of my paper here. I'm going to go pine cones, because I think it's cute. I'm going to cut my sheet in half. No, I'm not measuring it. I'm cutting it in half, simple as can be. That's it. Okay, now I'm going to take this, I'm going to figure it out, oh, maybe that big, okay, and I'm going to, I'm leaving edges over here and edges over here, I'm going to trim that puppy off, okay, now I'm going to take my, my glue, and I like using just tacky glue for this, it's fast, it's quick, it's easy, I mean, really, okay, and I'm doing the wrong edge, so let's do these first, side edges first, Gives you a nice finish on the front. Okay. Now only do to the edges and to your middle bottom of the box with glue. Okay. You don't want to attach anything else just yet. Okay. 
Then you're going to take your paper and you're going to line it up right on the very edge there. Okay. Give it a good smooshing. Okay. Now that that's completed, okay, I'm going to take, fold my box over, okay. Now this is my pattern paper here. This is my box, okay. And I'm going to look and see how much room I have between there and there because this is going to fold over the bottom, okay. Okay, so it looks good. Now I'm going to look at the sides. The sides are here to here. That looks good. But I've got this little piece here. Where is it going to go? I'm going to cut it off. It's that simple. And I'm going to cut it at an angle at the top here. I'm going to cut an angle into the corner here. And I'm going to cut a little angle to the bottom there. Okay? And I'm going to do that to the other side as well. Okay? So I'm going to do from the bottom this time, I'm going to do a little angle up to the corner, a little angle out to get rid of it, and a little angle, little angle back up to the corner. Okay? Reason for that. Now I'm going to go in, okay, and I'm going to put some glue on the bottom flap, and stick it down, and give it a fold. Okay? Now it's folded again on the crease. It works. Bottom is now secured, side is secured, okay? For the sides, you're going to want to take your paper and fold it over the edge of your box, okay? And give it a really good creasing at this point, okay? Because it's going to go around the corner, okay? And then you're going to do the other side just the same. A nice, quick creasing, just like that. Give it a good crease. Use your nail, use your bone folder, you know, whatever works for you, okay? That gives you a nice, crisp, little edges here. So now what you're going to do is you're going to put some glue on this side flap and some glue on that flap. Fold these up and up. Align your corners and bring your paper around, to the, around it. This works the same as paper tape. Now um, Jim the Gentleman Crafter has taught us all how to use paper tape and I use it a ton of it. You know, those little grooves and you put them up the corner. And I only use those when I'm building things. This, this is going to stay. It's that simple. It's going to stay. This works just like paper tape. Okay, and then I'm going to put the other edge. And I'm going to go into my box here. And I don't think you can see it. And I'm going to give it a really good pressing on each of those edges. Okay. Simple as that. I'm going to do the other side the exact same way. Okay. I'm going to put on my glue. Just like that. I'm going to line up my paper. I'm sorry, I have a habit of throwing things all over the place. You notice this time I left the paper the full length, the full six inches, okay? I'm going to smoosh it down really, really good, make sure it's all nice and aligned, okay? And this time I'm just going to cut the paper off and leave my edge that way, okay? No measuring, no nothing like I told you before. Now, once again, I need to go in and do my little trim. So I'm going to cut from the bottom at an angle and a little teeny angle. And you'll see it's not that much of an angle. It's just so the paper doesn't show on the bottom or on the top when I attach sides, okay? So, little teeny angle, okay? And another little angle, and another little angle to the corner, and a little angle down. Okay, so now again I'm gonna attach my bottom first. And like you've noticed, I do that because that way I can open it up and give it a really good pressing before I fold it in. Okay? Really, really good pressing. I just like my glue to stick. Okay? That's why I do so much pressing. A little harder to get my fold in on this one because I've already got those other two sides attached. Now you can attach all four sides of paper first and glue them up like that afterwards. Okay? Do all your folds first. Okay? And this one, I'm going to do it again. I'm going to fold in. Good crease. 
Go around that corner, fold it in again, good crease, whoops, I didn't quite get it, sorry. Good crease, and again, okay, now some glue, and I keep my bottle upside down just so everybody knows because I can't stand waiting for the glue to come down the bottle, or I lay it on its side, it's there. And yes, you can do this with, like I said, score tape, whatever you want. It doesn't matter. Um, I just like the glue because I can read. You know, this is quick grab anyways, but I like glue so that I can adhere it tight, you know, quickly. And move it around if I need to. Okay, there we go. Two sides of the box are completed. Okay, let's put on that last two sides. Okay, once again, I'm going to cut my paper in half. And I'm going to glue... Just the front, but now here you have to be careful because you have to go right to the edge of your box with your glue. Okay, or score tape. Works great if you can't get glue right to the edge. Okay. Just like that. Okay. And yes, I do use a lot of glue. Okay, I'm going to take my piece, line it up to the top again. Put it where you can see it. I keep going out of camera frame and I am sorry. Line it up. All done. See, I would have used this as my template, but I already have a template, like I said. Okay, and I would have cut, drawn this onto another sheet of paper and and used that piece to make my first box. But because I've already got my template, I didn't make a second one. Okay, now, this one's fun. Take your scissors and literally just cut right against the edge of the box. How simple was that? Other side, same thing. Don't cut off your bottom piece of paper yet. Okay? You're going to need this to cover the bottom. Okay? That's See, and once this paper is on top of the other one, that corner is sealed. That's it. It's not coming apart for nothing. All right? If you're worried about it, you can add uh, the paper tape method to it, okay? Now the bottom part, you do, once again, need to cut the little angles off. And the reason I do this is because when you fold it over, you don't want a piece of paper sticking out the side somewhere, okay? So do that. This one's a little harder to do a crease in. So what I do is I crease it backwards along the edge of the box, okay? First. So it's a backward crease first. And I give it a good sharp crease because then it just seems to go really nice when you flip it around. Okay, my glue's leaking out here, but that's okay. Okay, and then when I fold it back over, it just seems to want to crease there. So, and then do the other side the exact same. That's it. How simple and easy is that for making a box? Okay, if you have any questions, please d ask. I'll be more than willing to answer. And thank you. Have a great day.